Welcome to the Adventures Log, Episode 8. My name is Coach Flipperman and today we'll be featuring a Shinner Cleric configuration submitted by a great member of our community, Replay. This Adventures Guide submission is for the casual category. As such, it is a deck that doesn't have any restriction for its configuration, yet not fast enough to be considered a dedicated farming deck. If you know, if you follow X forums, you likely know who Replay is, but for those who don't know, he has been a streamer and an avid data gatherer slash analyzer for the game for a long time. His latest work include mapping the rewards on all of the 100 account levels, as well as being one of the main contributor to a XTCG wiki, linked in the description below. On top of that, we are lucky enough to have him participate in the recording of this episode, so welcome to the Adventures Log, Replay. Hello, it's great to be here. Excellent. Well, before we move on though, uh, to review the deck list and everything, I'd like to ask you a few questions and to get uh, people to know you better about uh, about what you do for X. So, um, I guess the first question would be, um, you chose when I contacted you to uh, share a PvE list for a featured video and you sent me this uh, Shinner list. So I wanted to know maybe a bit more about uh, why do you love this list so much and uh, why did you, did you want to share it? Oh. I'm very much looking forward to sharing this deck in some way. If you ever watch me, I used to stream. I used to stream this deck in Arena fairly often, but in a different version because we it was when Arena was the big thing to play instead of the campaign. But if any of you remember when Hex was when Hex was starting, you used to not have the campaign. You used to have, only have the Arena, and before that, nothing. And instead of getting 200 free cards that you do now, you would get a starter deck, the choice of the eight starter decks that have since been removed. And there was only four even before that because they only added the further four later on when they released set three. So I had a choice of four different races that I can't remember right now, but one of them was Shinhe. And I was like, this deck looks great. You can make lots of rabbits and power them up to become these great wide-swing troops that are going to kill the opponent. And I wasn't very good. But I was like, I've got these cards, I want to make them work. So I kept on working on this Mono Wild Shinhead deck because I just hated the idea of not getting my colours. So you saw me putting cards like Runs of Litter, Supplies Runt Gang in. And I kept on working at the deck, working deck, and eventually I beat the arena with it. I never got a perfect run because eventually I got the cards to make a Mono Ruby deck and that was the deck for several months. But every new set, I'd go back to this deck, see what else I can add, add to it. And gradually it's improved. Then came the campaign, and this set got such an upgrade. You'll see later when we talk about the talents and the cards that are in the deck. The Shinhead Cleric has such a powerful synergy that it just brought this deck to a new height. And I'm so glad to see this deck that I've been spent my whole time playing Hex, just going back to every new set, adding little bits to it, and just seeing what it's become now. It's so satisfying to see it actually reach that point I want it to be, so I'm really excited to share it today oh it's your uh, comfort shoes or so to speak oh yes like there are there are obviously better decks for campaign to play there are best decks for pve in general to play if you're looking for efficiency some some would even argue enjoyment but i personally find this my most enjoyable deck and that's what it comes down to this in essence is what i was thinking this is what i want to play when i play hex it was because it was the first deck i'm handed as we all learned it eventually turned out deck wasn't very good but it's what i wanted the deck to be and I'm so happy to play it because it's what my original vision of a deck to play in Hex would be like. Well, that's great. And after trying it before preparing for the video, I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of nice things in there. And as you said, if it's not necessarily a dedicated farming deck, but I, I, I found it very fun and I, I played a couple hours with it and I, I, I still enjoy it right now. So uh, I can't wait to uh, go on and do the review and start to do some gameplay but first I'd have another question for well second I'd have another question for you uh, this is something I, I usually ask for the people that participate in these uh, video either by providing new content or for interviews uh, I'm always you know we see a lot of people working in the background in the community and, and dedicating a lot of time and, and efforts to making you know recording things uh, documenting things posting on the forums and such and I always uh, make a point of asking, how many hours per uh, per week do you dedicate to X right now? Well, that depends when you ask me. Right now, it's zero hours. I actually play very little Hex at the moment because when I do anything in my life, I tend to put all my effort into that one point of it. 
So right now, my goal is get the wiki to where I want it to be. And because of that, the time I play Hex is very limited. Like the only time I really play in the week is a Hex Clash. And maybe maybe if I have like 40 minutes and I want to watch um, like the next episode of whatever program I'm watching at the time, I'll watch that episode and play some Marina instead. But I will... F but I will generally not be playing much hex at all during the week instead i'm putting my time to the wiki however when i am playing hex i'll focus generally on the pvp or pve side depending which i prefer at the time generally that's the newest bit of content but when i do i'm putting in like a solid eight to ten or even more hours a day playing it because that's just how i enjoy things i like really sinking my teeth into it getting just getting into the rhythm of playing it and that's just how I've always played all games I play. It's how I've done, always done everything I do. Oh, nice. And one could say that, uh, you know, spending time working on the wiki is still, you know, efforts or time related to X, really. So you're not playing the game, but you're still, you know, working towards creating content for X. And that, that's pretty commendable. And that's a lot of efforts. I, I know for a fact, like, regarding these small videos, they're a ton of work and a lot more than I expected them to be. And... To generate the amount of content that you generate you, you have to be very committed and that's pretty great to have people that are has committed in the community for sure guess uh yeah it's glad there's, i'm glad there's people like that in the game not just what i do but what so many people do you've got your adventures log and there's all these other sites going around as well i think it's great so many people who are choosing to specialize in doing certain areas because it means you get the real detail that people want out of it for sure. And uh, before we go on with the uh, deck review, because I'm sure a lot of people are now curious about the list since we talked about it, uh, we're going to get new features, uh, you know, a new patch was just announced, and in, in, generally speaking, there's a ton more that is coming to the game. Uh, what upcoming new feature would you like to see released next? Like, besides the ones that are already, uh, you know, reported for Frost Art, of course. What upcoming feature? That's a very good question. I tend not to think too much about what Hex is doing is planning on doing next because most of my time is put in is put into doing what's now in Hex with the wiki. So I've never really thought about that too much, to be honest. Um, I think everyone's really excited for the multiplayer aspect of Hex. So I that that's kind of like a really easy go-to answer though. I'm just looking forward to just generally there being more content in the game. I'm They've got the so release schedule really solid, so I'm looking forward to just set a Adventure Zone free when they get when they manage to finish it. I'm just looking forward to seeing what new content they can create for us to play more than a specific feature in general. The features will come as the content is made. All right, fair enough. That means that we're ready to dig into the deck review then. All right, so on to the deck list. First, to give us some context on the powers that are, go that are going to be used, we're going to review the Kribrick class and its talents uh, before anything else. So, um, first one here is cute and fuzzy, really simple, plus three starting out. Um, we get expendable lives, a random troop in your opening end gets one shot, dead cry, put this into play. Uh, I believe this one is, is pretty awesome for a Chanel list, right? Yeah, I really like it in this deck. Like, sometimes the AI is just like, I'm going to block this card and then you get it back. I, I play with extended art most of the time, so I never notice my card has it, so it's always like a nice little surprise for me. <laughs> I have noticed that in equal trades, like if you have two to attack troops and then neither of them are doing anything else, the AI will, for some reason, mostly go for this Death Cry troop. I don't know if that's just confirmation bias, but I've noticed it happen quite a few times. So maybe there's something in there to think about. Maybe I'm just saying something that's not true at all, but it's worth thinking of, just bearing in my mind. Well, in my experience, generally the AI goes with the higher rarity cards first. So if it ends up, you know, lending on something yeah, with high rarity, it might just be I've that. I've never really but... thought too much into what the AI focuses over what, to be honest. It might just, just try to get rid of the text that if it can. Is fucking a lot of my games. <laughs> All right, and next we've got for level fifteen overwhelm at the start of the game. Uh, you start the game with a random one cushioner in play. 
if you won the last dungeon encounter, this dungeon run. So you don't get yes, it for this the first. This is but... a very powerful talent indeed. You understand it more once we go through through the deck, but to just put a little point on it for now, there are a lot of good one cost gin heads that you can hit with that with that power, and it can certainly set you up for a very powerful game. Yep. Our race class combo, and this one is so fun. I think this this for me makes the deck is fertility magic. When you play a Shinair, you have twenty five percent chance to summon a battle opper. Yeah, you're playing a lot of troops when you play this deck sometimes. So this can really go off and just get you these massive boards of troops that are just going to swing through the opponent. It doesn't matter what they can block with because they're just going to get outswung. And if you it, we can't access it yet, of course, but if you just look at level 30 talent, this gets even stronger as well. And I'm really excited for what the future of this deck can hold. Yep. Did that create 4 fertility magic trait? 25% uh, 20 chance to become random Shin Hair Cleric instead. Oh. Yeah, there's quite a few good Shin Hair Clerics as well. So yep. it's potential yep. even from the very first turn you could sometimes have like a 6 drop in play. Not common, granted, but it, it, it could happen once level 30 is available. Uh, I will say that Runir Yeofant is a cleric. Yes, Runir Yeofant is a cleric. I believe Azume's Handmaiden is as well. Um, not Azume's Handmaiden, Azume, just the regular six cost card. Yeah. But I'm looking that up just now to make sure. Um, no, it's not just Conquer Bunny, damn. Oh, but there's okay. definitely some good hits. Come on, <laughs> Buck Chief Commander's another one. Very good. It's, very, it's going to be very good when that talent becomes active one day. Yeah. And as for the Cleric cl class itself, uh, since we're playing a Shinner Cleric, uh, we're going to get Prey as our class power. Um, for those who don't know, uh, this is basic speed, two uh, charge power that create two blessings and put them into your deck. Blessings are very simple card. There is zero cost basic action that gains two health and draws a card. Uh, there's a few talents that modify them, but you're just adding more and more of these actions that cost zero and draw a card and gain you health. And at some point it can become, you can get a chain and get lucky and adds a lot of survivability to, <laughs> to uh, the cleric class in general. And when you have like very wide boards like that, you, you can really take advantage of these and then just sit on your board if you really need to. The first talent that we're going to uh, go and get for this build is Affinity Cleric. Clerics uh, that begin the game in your deck it gets life drain. We're going to run a few. Uh, it, it's a nice perk. We're really going on the right side here to go and get the higher talent, but this one is perfectly fine and it adds survivability as well, so it's pretty neat. Uh, the other one, and this one is really, really cool, is uh, Unlock Divine Altar. You begin the game with a Divine Altar in your deck, or two if you have 100 more cards. Of course, we're not going to run one on the card deck right now but um, to let you know what a divine altar is when you play a blessing copy it when you play a cleric copy it at the start of your turn if this is in your deck move it one space up yeah the divine altar is a very fun card as anyone who's played cleric knows and it's worth mentioning there's quite a few very important cards in the deck that are clerics so the deck can get really out of hand if you get that divine altar but we'll go more into that when we get to the actual deck list Yep, next one, Fortitude is just uh, troops you control that have plus one defense during dungeon boss encounters and you gain plus two health. Yeah, this is a talent that I've never really thought too much of until I use this deck. It's I like it because you often swing quite wide and when you do you tend to lose a few troops because you want to get the damage through and you accept you're going to lose something with it. But this thing, this actually helps you survive a lot of the time which has proven to be helpful in a lot of runs I've done in various dungeons and just through the campaign in general. Yep, and Cleric is all about survivability and, and outlasting your opponent and even if this is still a fast deck, it, it's nice to have these things and I, I think that this is likely the last talent point that you put more or less, so you yeah, can switch it, it to what you like. Point. Yeah, But it still proved really effective. All right, next one is Diligent Study. When you play a card, move each card with the same name as that card in your deck up one space. Just, you just don't, I just don't like being shard screwed. So when I have 
a card to play, I'd be much happier to draw another copy of that card than I would be a shard in a deck like this. So it works really well. That yep. being said, you still will get shard food. Shards screwed. Shards flooded with this deck. Just disregard any time I said said she had said Scrooge before that. If you get shards flooded, it can really suck with this deck. So this just helps prevent it a little bit. Yeah. Usually I, I start you win. know I stop yeah. playing my shards at four ish when I have this talent just to make sure that I don't draw too many of them. You know in the mid yeah. late game. Unless I need them, of course, but uh, this this one has a very low curve, so uh, usually around four, you're pretty much done. Yeah, I agree with that. So next one on the left side is Ale. Um, it's just an it, you know enables the next talent tier, but it's just straight up plus three health. Also, always nice to get a, a small buffer here. Uh, next one, Healing Aura. You begin the game with an Healing Aura in play, and this one is. A constant that costs two when you play a resource, gain one health. Yeah, there's not much to say. It's another just bridge talent to get to next talent. We've not really pointed it out until now, but the starting health of Shinhe Cleric is very high. Like, you're going to have 30 health start when you play this deck. And that can let you tank quite a few hits while you build up your board sometimes. It's very important to remember. And most of the time when we go for Ealing Aura, it's because we want... Uh, or aspect good karma because this one is really really sweet uh, it, it just modifies your healing aura and adds a line of text to it at the start of your turn move each blessing in your deck up one space so we're creating blessings with our champion power we already know that when we play one all the other blessings are going to go up one space and with that starting with healing aura we're going to get a, a blessings going up every turn so we're going to draw and play them yeah, really like it. It's a solid card in, or it's a solid talent in any deck, really, that's a cleric. And although clerics aren't core cool to this, clerics, although blessings aren't core cool to this deck, it's still really effective. Just adds to the consistency and adds to a little bit of power because of an additional point that we put into blessings, which we'll get to in a few talents. Yeah, well, might as well look into them right now. So we've got two talents that improve the blessing. The first one is an ends blessing, life ascents. Uh, really simple, we're just going to uh, add 2L to the uh, 2L that we're already gaining. So instead of gaining 2 each time we play 1, we're going to gain 4. And then that enables the much better Enhanced Blessing Empowerment. Uh, that when we play a Blessing, a random troop you control with the highest cost gets plus 1 plus 1. Yeah, really like this talent in the deck as well. Again, Blessings aren't core to this deck. You're really just making a lot of troops that are going to attack wide. But giving your highest cost 1 plus 1 plus 1 attack, it's never a bad thing. Makes your string, your strings, your swings better. You'll always be happy to get a Blessing if you, if you draw this card. Or if you have this talent, you'll be happy to get a Blessing anyway, let's be honest. But this just makes it a little bit better. Yeah, and, and some, you know, some games you'll just get a, a streak of like two or three blessings on, on turn two or three and then all of a sudden like your board is really, really big. Yeah, I love it. Next one, Blessed Bird. Uh, you begin the game with uh, four blessings in your deck. So, or eight if you have 100 cards, but just more blessings, right? You start with four and then on the second turn you activate your champion, uh, your character power. You get two more, you're at six. Uh, they go up one space every turn, and if you ever get one, they go, they move up again. So usually they, they kind of tend to get cluttered because of all these talents combined, and this is really where thing, the magic happens. Yeah, this is definitely a powerful talent, and um, it's it's also a bridge talent. It does. Um, we are looking for, we are looking to get to two talents adjacent to it, but it's very powerful on its own. Definitely a great improvement to the tier two tree of clerics. Speaking of uh, reaching for other talents, we got the Child of the Right Hand. At the start of the game, draw a card for each blessing in your hand. We already know that we're starting with four, so there's a decent chance that we get one in our starting end. And in PvE, we've got a free mulligan, so you, you can easily, you know, mulligan the, say, average hand, try to get a blessing, and then all of a sudden you start with a, one more card. Yeah, it's, re it's really powerful. Um... Like, and the thing is, it can be more than one. If you, it's for each blessing. So if you're lucky and start with all four in your starting hand, you're going to start yourself with an 11 card hand. Like, it's an incredibly powerful 
talent. Obviously, the RNG is going to go in your favour most of the time, but I'd say like one in every three or so games, you're going to be activating. You're going to be getting effect, at least a draw with it. Yeah, so that's about my experience with it. Yeah, so I really like it. And last one, but not certainly not least, Premonition. At the start of the game, look at three random cards from your deck, but one on top of, but one of those card on top of your deck, then put the remaining cards into your deck. So we essentially look at three cards from our deck at the start of the game. We put when and we put one on top of our deck. So we decide to we we got selection on the first card that we draw. Yeah, it's just a nice, useful talent. Um, I run it in any deck that I can. That's a cleric. Not even just this one. I just and I just really like it. Adds consistency, and I love the way hex works sometimes, because of the order stuff happens. You can choose your cards on top of your deck, but it's possible the two you didn't select could actually end up being put above that card you selected because they're just put into the deck at random again. And it does. I've only had it once, but one time I did draw a card I didn't choose off it because it was put above the card I chose, and I just found that really funny. <laughs> Uh, this one is more or less highlighted, but we're not using it. It's, uh, it's just because yeah, it's the it's next thing. It, yeah. um, it's just get additional talent point, but we, we don't want additional talent point if it means having 25 more cards in our deck. Yeah, not really. There, there's a very low amount of cleric decks that want that, but uh, it's fun. But it's generally not what you want, not what you want to do anyway. Not not in a list like that. So. Um, speaking about the list, let's us just go and, and review the cards. Uh, we've got a nice clean shard base of 13 wild shards uh, with uh, four Monsagi lily pads. And what I really like is that we're running four Mentor's Keepsake. Yeah, I really like this. I knew when I first saw this resource in Adventure Zone 2, it was going to be a useful card. And it shows how powerful it can be in this deck which hopefully we'll get to off when we get some gameplay later on. Yeah, and we're Cleric, so this helps reducing the cost of Clerics, since they're the same class as us, so it doesn't work with all troops, but a good portion of our troops will be Clerics, so that that's really cool, and I didn't see very, you know, a, a lot of lists right now up to the up to this day that runs this, uh, this shard, mainly because it doesn't provide a threshold, but it, in a mono list like that mono wild and playing the cleric cleric is just perfect i really love this is one of the reasons i really like the list um we're going to go with maximum number of acorns it's pretty standard you need to have a good reason not to uh, so you know the drill by now where if it's at eight uh we're running as many acorns as we can um for the rest uh, i guess I'll, I'll leave you run through the card and i'll just uh, i like them uh, as we go um, okay well since you just glanced over it, Montague Lily Pad, for those who don't know, just so we can get the resources out of the way, um, it's a Shinher Allegiance, so you need to have a Shinher in your hand or in play to trigger this part of the effect. You can either choose to get a Blood, choose to get a Wild, or you can summon a Battle Hopper, which is just a 0 1 attack troop, um, one cost. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but as long as it's making a, a Shinher of some kind, we're happy to have it. So if you have your thresholds and you've got a Lily Pad in hand, you will take that battle hopper over the over the wild threshold any day of the week, You're, because you only have two. Your highest threshold this whole deck is double wild. You're never going to need to worry about getting about struggling on thresholds of this deck. Um, so I think I'm going to start. I think we'll start with some of the more simple troops. Cottontail Ronin. Um, he's just a one cost zero two troop with rage one. Nothing particularly special about him. He's just a good turn one play. Um, cause two defense, three defense, if you have the talent active, it's just quite powerful and getting that one extra attack through or getting that one attack, then two attack, then three attack. It's, it's just a good turn one play. Not much else to say about it, to be honest. Um, next up, let's go with Keeper of the Wounded Petal down the bottom left. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, oh. uh, Keeper. Oh, bottom this left. one. Yep. Yep. And um, this is another just powerful one turn one play he's a one cost one attack one defense troop again single wild just when a shin hand is your hand it gets plus one plus one um now i don't know which i prefer to play on turn one if i have a choice of keep or ronin i tend to switch between the two because ronin theory is 
a better turn one play because you're guaranteed the extra one damage but keeper can get very big very quickly so he's obviously a very good two and to be honest i think they're about equal and but, he's also a cleric right so he's got yes, life drain he from the start yes he has life drain from the start he works with divine altar although because he's a one drop he tends to play it before divine altar and he works with mentor's keepstone so or keepsake sorry so you can make it zero cost it's really powerful and to get over the loss of the simple troops in the deck, we'll go with Milano Sensei, which is down the bottom row there. He's two cost, one attack, one defense troop. It's just a ploy draw card. Because you are trying to make so because you're trying to make such a big board, just having a card that effectively gives you another card is fine in itself. So it's just a he's just in there to effect to effectively just be a troop. Not much else to say about it, to be honest. Right then, now let's get to some of the actual synergy in this deck. So we'll start with um, Ritualist Spring Litter. Now, this is a one, one cost, one, one troop again, but it has a very powerful effect in this deck, which is if one of your cards or effects to create a Shin Hair, it creates that many plus one instead, which means it's going to make your chart, your passive power for being a Shin Hair Cleric, make two battle hoppers, it makes them exactly Lily Pad, make a battle hopper and anything else that makes battle hoppers in our deck that we'll go over a bit later will also be making extra battle hoppers it's just shin hair everywhere if you can get this if you can get this guy into play even multiples of him and again he is a cleric so you can even you can even make him a even with divine ultra in play you can then double him up to have two of him in play and even better with this because you are copying the card of Divine Altar, if you get a Richest in play, Divine Altar is actually making you two copies because it's plus one as well. So yeah. if you get a Richest in the Divine Altar in play, you're getting three clerics every time you play a cleric. Oh, it's just, if, it, if you ever get it going <laughs> off, it's so good. Yeah, it's insane. And just, just to reiterate, uh, this one, when you create a Shinner, you create one more. It's not just Battle Uppers. Although most of the time it's going to be Battle Uppers with this list. If you somehow create shinners any type, any cost, it's just going to create one more. Yes, it's I, I really enjoy it. Right then. Um what should we look at next? Um how about recruiter? Let's look at Contel Recruiter since he's now a pretty big part of the deck. So you may have noticed making a lot of battle hoppers in this deck with this deck. Well this card is perfect for that. If you if one of your card effects would create a battle hopper, it'll create a Shin Hair militia instead. Now, Shinhead Militia is just a one cost, one attack, two defense troop. It's actually also just a regular card in the game, not just a token card like the Battle Hopper is, but we don't run the main card in our deck because we have better one drops to play. I should also mention Cocktail Recruit is a one cost, one attack, one defense troop, so he's not the worst turn one play in terms of stats either. And it's just really powerful getting Battle Hopper instead. With that in mind, could you bring up Shinhead Militia again for a second? There's actually equipment in this deck on this card. Oh, it doesn't quite show up in this view. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's very unusual for a deck to have this, but although we don't technically run a Shin Hair Militia in the deck, it's only created um, from the effect of Cottontail Recruiter. Shin Hair Militia, we have the Shin Hair Militia equipment on in this deck. And that equipment is when your Shin Hair Militias have deploy, another Shin Hair you control to, of, your, of your choice will get plus one attack, plus one defense. So if you're making battle hoppers, not only are you getting this one attack to defense troop instead of a zero one troop, you are now getting this. You're now making your other shin says even bigger. It's, it's just yeah, so and fast. that that was one of the other thing I really really like with this list that you submitted is that it's extremely very very creative. Like we're running an equipment for a card that we don't play, but we do create it, and the equipment for the create works on the created cards as well. So we don't even run that card, we have an equip for it, and we're triggering it all the time. Yeah, I did try to see if there was a, a chess equipment worth using, because we do make a few one-cost Shin Hair cards, but unfortunately there's no really good chess equipment for one-cost cards, so unfortunately it kind of takes a seat back in the deck. But hopefully one day there'll be some good, a good chess piece to put in, just in case on a whim we make this random Shin Hair that it works with. Well, um, now then. Technically, there's okay. a chess equipment for a spectral acorn, but you never use that, so... <laughs> you, acorns do something other than draw cards? This is news to me. <laughs> it I shouldn't think be. where these Mystic Squirrels on my account came from. Yeah, I think anyway. I got one 
and that was an error. Yeah, um, I I went out of my way to get four mystic scrolls just for a playset of them, and then I accidentally used a fifth one, and I had to take like an hour just to be really sad about it because now I'm stuck with a fifth mystic scroll forever. <laughs> All right. Right then, um, blossoming concubine. Let's finish off. Well, let's just finish off the one cost cards next. Blossoming concubine has a is just a one cost, one attack, one defense troop, and it's got a pretty simple one shot power of create a bat hop and put it into your hand which means more troops to play, always a good thing. With Ritualist, it means you're going to get two Battle Hoppers. With Recruiter, it means you're going to get two Militia instead, or a Militia instead. And then, on top of that, if you go, if you look at Keeper of Wounded Petal, again, uh, this bottom left, one. Yep. Yep. If you look at that again, he'll get plus one, plus one, just when the Shin Hair enters your hand. So you can save the effect of Blossoming Concubunny as almost a combat trick for Keeper of Doing the Petal, because the AI doesn't care about what a card does. And they'll be like, oh, my free attack troop can, my free attack troop can block and trade with this free defense free defense keeper of doing the petal. But if Blossoming Concubunny's in play, you'll be able to make it bigger and kill off that troop and be happy with what's with what's happened. And it's so quick, I've right? Yes, it's a quick effect, so you can use it as a combat trick. It's just very powerful. Now then, if we look at Guru of the Wounded Petal next, just finish off the one cost cards. So it is a one cost, four attack, three defense troop, which is very powerful for a one cost card. But you do have to bear in mind, um, you can only play it if two or more troops enter play under your control this turn. Now, ordinarily, that's quite a high threshold to get to reach for decks like this because you're normally emptying your hand out quickly. But when you think you have a lily pad that's going to give you one troop off the bat, when you have so many one card drops, it's not hard to get this guy out even on even turn two. On top of that, he is a cleric, so Keepsake is going to be able to make him zero cost just to make it a bit easier to get him out. And even, even better, he is a cleric, so he gets doubled up by Divine Altar as well. And we are running his gloves equipment, which this is such a fun equipment in the game as well. So what, what the equipment gloves equipment does is... At the start of each turn, so both yours and the opponent's, for if the only cards in your hand are Groove the Wounded Petal, you summon a Battle Hopper, which means that not only are you getting troops on the opponent's turn, and this can be put up to two Battle Hoppers with Ritualist again, or even more if you have more Ritualist, and not only can they become a Militia with Recruiter, if your hand is just four Groove the Wounded Petal, you almost don't want to play them out of your hands because you are getting four Battle Hoppers every single turn at least. You're getting eight if a Ritualist is in play. Obviously, you're never going to have four Guru in hand because you can only run three of the Shard Grid. But if you have, even if you have the three in hand, it's still a lot, a lot of them coming out. So it's just a really powerful equipment. And at the very worst, if you just want to play the Gurus instead of just get tons of Shin Hair every turn, generally you've already got one Battle Hopper for free. So if you get just if you're top decking for the Guru, it it won't take long to find a Shin Hair you can put down and then play the Guru after it. Yeah. Just a very powerful card. I'd say usually with the small experience I have with the list, I'm kind of greedy on it. If I have only one Guru in hand, I usually just play it as soon as possible. But if I, if I have two, then I go, oh, screw it. I, I want to see the double, you know, battle uppers every turn. And then at some point you get a Militia or the uh, Ritualist and then you get a, just an army. Like in three turns you get dozens of Shinners and it's just so fun. Yeah, it's, re it's just really powerful card in general um i didn't i glossed over it a second ago but chlorophyllia is in the deck chlorophyllia with its hat equipment is just a very powerful card so chlorophyllia is normally a two cost card that is just two cost basic action it's just play a random wild shard from your deck so it's a bit of ramp um however with gardener's hat it is a one cost card because it has cost minus one which means you can play it on your first turn and still do what you'd normally do first turn. And then next turn, you're going to have two resources and a third if you have a, if you have a wild shard. If you have all four chlorophyll in your starting hand, you can start your second turn with five resources. Although if you've played four chlorophyll, you probably have some problems with other cards to play. <laughs> still just, just a generically good card to have in a lot of wild decks and it's no exception here. So let's go on to the Min Minaru Sharpshooter next. And this is... The newest card in the deck being a Scars of War card. It is a two cost, one attack, one defense troop, and it has an effect of deploy conscript and underworld troop with cost one, which means that basically you are going to be making a one cost underworld troop that is going to be a wild threshold. So no matter what you hit, you'll be able to play. And when he attacks, 
uh, or when a one cost card you control attacks, he'll get plus one, plus one for each. So when you're getting all these one cost militias, keeper wound petal, ronins, battle hoppers, goos, all these cards being one cost makes his attack stronger and he can swing for a lot of damage in some games. Just, I've, I've got a small list up here of just some of the cards you can hit um, for being what for being one cost and there's some there's some very fun hits like you can you can get um blood bearer which is also shin hair but you're going to gain some health if your stuff dies which is never bad you can get sneak blade and milky eye which is normally a blood shin hair card that's going to that's going to come win, win from games. <laughs> yes it's going to win games but like it's very powerful and as you play you'll find there's many great cards to hit with it Turns out a lot of one cost cards are powerful. And again, if you hit a Shin Hair with his conscript, it will double up because of the rich list. So, really powerful. Yep. So, let's go on to the last of the troops. Bucktooth Commander. This is one of the powerful cards in the deck. Um, so, he's a free cost, which is tied for the highest cost in the deck. And he, uh, and he has double wild. He is the double wild threshold card of the deck. And he has other Shin Hair. You can try a plus one attack, plus one defense. And he's two attack, two defense. Now, obviously, this is one of the core cards. Your Shin Hair are getting bigger. You and you'll like your Shin Hair getting bigger with this deck. He also has an equipment which is on deploy. So when you play him, you'll get you'll summon the Battle Hopper, which means if you have Riches again, it's going to be two. Recruiter's going to make it militias as well. So you're getting two troops for the price of one just for playing him. On top of that, he is a cleric, so we divine altar works with him. He can be powered up Mentor's Keepsake as well. Although, because of Double Wild, you'll never actually be playing him on turn one. Or t not turn one, turn two, because if you play Keepsake, you're not going to have the Double Wild to play the two cost Buck Dude Commander. But still, well, it's worth it. You're, you're, if you open the game with the first turn Clarophilia, you could. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's a fair point. I don't think I've ever had that. But yeah, that's, that could happen, actually. So. It's a very so he's a very powerful card. He's one of the core cards of the deck. It's one of the core just Shin Hair cards in, as a whole, to, that represents the archetype. And, and look at this heart. Uh, like this is one I of know. the cool ones where you extend the art, like the fire and yeah. everything. Yeah, it's something we've not really mentioned. Like this deck extended looks beautiful. It's a really good looking extended art deck. Yep, yep, for sure. I, I really like it for that. So. Last of all is the two main remaining actions. You've got Evolve, which is one of the original cards. It's a free cost. Each troop you control gets plus one attack, plus one defense. Um, nothing much to say. Your troop gets bigger. It's generally the last card you play out of your hand. Just very powerful in itself. And this is the big one that really put the deck into a new light when it came out. You have Glyph of Primordium, which is just target troop gets plus one attack, plus one defense. However, it has a piece of equipment. And that is, instead of instead of targeting a troop it's each troop you control gets plus one attack plus one defense so your entire board is going to get bigger but a cost of zero it's such a powerful card it it's one of the things that really pushed the deck into a new light yeah i really like it. and all, all the the glyph the, the glyph cycle for that set was they're all the same right there, there's one for each uh shard and originally when you don't modify them with an equipment they just target one troop and do their thing like plus one rage uh flight um steadfast things of the sort but when you put their equipment they become extremely good because there is zero cost and like plus one plus one to everything at zero cost this 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 is very very hard to beat in, in the list that you're going wide and I, I i would go even you know as 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 far as to say as this these glyphs with the equipment are you know staples in pve just for the fact that these are zero cost cards that will affect the whole board and you know we've seen a ton of glyph of fate red being played in in really you know high-end you know tier first tier farming decks because it's just so efficient right for zero cost you augment all your troops and then you swing for victory a lot of the time this zero cost action is going to provide us with like anywhere between 5 to 12 damage yeah it's a, it's a lot of damage it's a real powerhouse in the deck and it's worth mentioning this deck can function in, in the arena as well but instead of having the benefit of Shinhe cleric um making random Shinhe, you instead have a five cost charge power in Fazuko that makes your whole board bigger for plus one plus one so the dam this works in the arena because the damage output ends up averaging about the same just instead of swinging in with like five troops that have a bunch of attack you have, you're swinging with four troops that have 
a bunch of that have a bunch of attack, but one more than the bunch. Yeah, and you're you're a bit less, uh, you know, uh, defensive or not necessarily defensive, but sturdy, right? When you do the arena, you don't have all the talent points, you don't have the blessings, you don't yeah, have, you'll the have extra life well. at the start. Yeah, you, you'll you'll have a bit less health when you do you go through it as well. And uh, the, this deck is obviously very strong. It's very it's very fun to play, but you have to be careful um, in any in any encounter you do. Like if you're playing an encounter, it starts with a lot of troops in play, such as the mosquito encounter in ruins. Um, you're going to struggle a little bit because it's just hard to get around all of those troops. And if you're in the arena, for example, and you're making a version of the deck for arena, like unless you play very well, you're going to lose to Warbot a lot of the time because you're going to just see your board get wiped. Yeah, you need to be <laughs> you need to be holding on cards and just have one or two out, and after the first activation, then you go nuts. But yeah, like, that, so, that's so the deck. Yeah, the deck isn't like a one trick fits all, but it's like a this trick fits nearly everything, and you just pretend the things it doesn't fit into don't exist. Kind it of does deal. strong thing, strong things, and consistently so. It's very reliable. Yes. Yes, reliable is definitely how I describe it. And uh, to uh, complete this configuration, we've got a party passive. So, um, and and usually on, on a lot of lists that we featured on the Adventures Log, Adventures Log so far, uh, we, use, we often use party uh, passives from the mercenaries to add a constant power or constant uh, advantage to the deck that you can rely on and then build uh, around it. But with this list, what is particular as well is that uh, we don't really rely on the party passives to make the deck work. We're just using them to complement what we're already doing. Yeah, that's something I've noticed about the, part about the party passives that are kind of awkward to get around. Um, a lot of the party passives are either here, have some charge at the start of every game. Here, have some health at the start of every game. Here, have a Dreadling that dies after the first turn in every game. Or everything else is a troop in, at random in your deck gets this. Or a, or you have a 25% chance to start with a Dingler in play. It's like, you don't want those you don't want those charge, those party passives that might not happen, but you kind of have to use those in this deck because there isn't there isn't one that says a troop in your hand gets plus one tap, plus one defense at start at start of the game, or you are hundred percent guaranteed to off a battle hopper. Although that would be a fantastic power to have in this deck, and I hope they make that one day. For sure. However, yeah. However, there is one particular mercenary that does work in this deck very well, and that is Seki. Um, I know we're starting this out of order, but it's worth mentioning this is the only mercenary that like really has a huge impact, and because his party passive is just generally powerful. Um, at the start of the game, if you have a non-resource card in your hand with zero cost, draw a card. So that means the spectral acorns in your deck in our deck can draw us a card at the start of the game. The glyphs in our deck can draw us a card at the start of the game. If we start with a bless on the blessings in our hand at the start of the game, we'll get a draw of that as well. So I was finding i've not played many games with the deck since seki came out but i was finding at least for me about half the time i was getting the extra draw off the, off the seki yeah it, it's a bit buggy right now but um it, it works most of the time and my personal you know test with it I, and i haven't read the forums about it so maybe that the the bug is is uh clearly documented but the 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 you know gut feeling i have is that it doesn't tend to work when you are uh on the draw but, yeah, that's what I've read. And but when you're in the play, usually it's it seems reliable. If anything, uh, maybe it doesn't work with Acorn. I don't know if if the spectral aspect of Acorns makes it like sometimes yeah. doesn't work. But for the most part, right now it's still worthwhile. Even even with with the bug, it's still worthwhile to use. And as soon as the bug gets fixed, it's going to be extremely reliable because in bit you know between the four. Uh, blessings that we start with in the deck and then we have three glyphs and two acorns that's a that's what that's uh that's nine zero cost cards that yeah. we start with in our deck so there's a very high chance that we start with one in our starting in yeah it's very effective but we'll take a look at the other two mercenaries as well again these mercenaries aren't as as significant it's kind of your choice and what you run at this point but we'll look at spirit triumphant first um this is um this is one of the most interesting mercenaries that they've released so far, if only because it's the only one so far whose party passive upgrades when you upgrade the mercenary. 
Um, the version we're using is the upgraded version, I think. Are we? Maybe we're not. Um, um, let's see. Do I have the upgraded version? I don't think I have the upgraded version. Okay, well, that that's fine. Now, the regular version of it is at the start of a game, a random troop in your deck gets flight, a random troop in your deck gets speed, a random troop in your deck gets steadfast. But when you upgrade it, instead of three different troops getting each of those keywords individually, the upgraded text is three random troops in your deck gets all three, get all three of those keywords each. So you're going to have three troops in your deck that are going to fly, have speed, and be steadfast. And we like cards with speed in this deck because we're an aggressive deck. Well, we're not, we are an aggressive deck, but we're running up a board and just having something you can play that turn and attack with it, incredibly powerful. So that's why I choose to use it. But again, because you might not get the card, it's not the most ideal thing to be using. Okay. And uh, the last one is Kafra. Yeah, Kafra is, uh, is a mercenary that came with set with set six and it is at the start of the game two random clerics mages rangers rogues warlocks all warriors in your deck will get cost minus one so the, the hope for this is something like keeper of the wounded um or just the hope for this is something like guru i'm not quite sure i said keeper but like guru will get a cost reduction or commander or, well, or sensei really like most of the troops that you have are fits within these classes right yeah, well, I think everything does. Yeah, it's I don't think there's... The well, maybe... Classes. Yeah, Concubine doesn't fit because she's a Concubine, oh, yeah. but... Yeah, so Blossomy Concubine hasn't been, but I think every other one does. And yeah. I know it's not in the list, but I just had a thought. There might be a better mercenary to use for... The, to use than Kafra or Spirit Um I'm not quite sure how it works, but Taffa the Tireless... Put, makes two blessings at the start of the game. I can't remember if that is the wording that says it's before, um, before like you get your starting hand or after. But if it's before the start, if it's before starting hand, then that might be worth using instead of Kafra or Spirit Triumvirate. Well, I'd say really that even if it's after, the fact that we're running talents that make blessings, you know, go up within our deck, the fact that each blessing is really a plus one plus one to a troop, I think. It's it's likelier that we draw an additional blessing because of it than we draw a card that was affected by, say, Spirit of the Triumvirate or Kefra. Yeah. Maybe, yeah that so maybe, you know, if you, for anyone who wants to try the list, uh, as Reaper mentions, there's a lot of flexibility with the mercenaries. If you have Seki, that would be your priority. But uh, I, I personally, if I, you know, really try to crunch the list and do maybe an, a new iteration on it, I think Tefford would be at the top of the list of things I want to try for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I guess we've got the full context of the list. Now uh, the only thing that remains is to try it. Now, um, for this uh, gameplay, I chose one of the earlier dungeons within the game, the third one. And uh, since we're playing a an, another war troop, this is the... Um, gosh, what's the name of this one? Um, um, I don't remember. Fort Wormore. Fort Wormore. Yeah. Yes. So one of the key things and why I wanted to run this dungeon is that um, when you're starting out, you're playing X, uh, you're going to get your first first character and it's going to be hard. You're not going to go through Adventure Zone 1 in one go. And the first time you're going to hit Adventure Zone 2, you're going to say, wow, this is on another level of, you know, a power that, that I need to reach. And uh, for a lot of the players this is where you need to start farming and one of the things that you should be farming is this dungeon if you're playing underworld it's going to be fort romor if you're playing ardent it's going to be another dungeon but they both have something in common in the loot that they provide you there's a troop that is ardent recruiter and or underworld recruiter depending on what you run and that troop is fantastic it is stable for pve and it comes from this dungeon and I highly suggest anyone that it's not on a already, you know, complete collection for PvE uh, to start farming this dungeon for the recruiters. So maybe we're lucky and we're going to get one, but just wanted to showcase this one particularly because of that. And uh, here we go. This one is very interesting, gives us a few choice. We're going to have to go through the first few fights and uh, we're going to mainly be playing our characters, so... Let's do this. Yeah, I have a question for you. Have you ever done this dungeon in order that isn't left to right? Yes, I did. I did try every order. 
And it was uh, one of the first thing I tried <laughs> when I entered it. It's like, oh, there's choice. So what 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 will happen oh, if I this change the order? But uh, it's mostly the same. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it would be for the first three encounters. It's just like I've always just gone left to right. I've never thought about doing it in any other order. Uh, anyway, this starting hand seems awesome, right? Yeah, I love this starting hand. This starting hand is incredible. We're going to do this. So. That's we, we've got Chlorophyllia, we've got Ritualist, so we'd like to see something that creates a Shinair. We already have the uh, Lilipad. Um, I think we just want the Glyph here, to be honest. Yeah, I, yeah. We're only, we already know we're going to go super wide with two uh, Ritualists, so I think we want a Glyph first. Yeah, yeah and we don't start with one costume in this encounter because you need to have won your last match. Ooh. Oh. I wonder how that got there. Why is that not? Why is that not? Um, uh, this is the thing you were hinting to, right? So, depending yeah, on the order of the powers the, at the start of the game. The if that was the case, it would have been the Mentor's Keepsake or Wild Shard. Strange. Anyway. Well, we were supposed to get a, a the Glyph, but I'm guessing that the Blessings were created within the deck after we choose the top card of our deck. And a Blessing was created on top of it. Maybe. Anyway, All let's right, just go so for Wild Shard, I think. Wild, Chlorophyllia, and then... One thing you need then, to be careful is that every time we play a card, uh, a, the same uh, cards with the same name will go up one space, so before using any Blessing, make sure that you activate your champion power. Yep. But... No, put the, put the riches down first, of course. Yes. Got to make sure I get some plus one, plus one. And look, we get another Blessing. I think, yeah, we're just using it, right? Yeah, just gonna use it. See what we draw. There's the glyph. Okay, so we're not using the glyph right now, though. Oh, next Spice turn's gonna turn. be a good turn, maybe. But this is a good first turn. Like, we have a Ritualist, it's a tree tree with life drain. And here's the Recruiter. That's the card you want to farm for Ardent. And there's a version for the Underworld. Just says. Your Ardent or Underworld troops uh, in all zones are minus cost one, and this is extremely powerful. Don't yeah. do not underestimate this card. Yeah, just just stress by playing as an Underworld troop, you are a tr by playing as an Underworld character, you will be getting Ardent recruiter from the dungeon. Yeah, and then if you play as a um, if you play as an Ardent character, you'll get the Underworld recruiter from the dungeon. So here it's the opposite. Got... Yeah, the opposite. Like, you, you need to create at least two, one character for each faction if you want to get this set. Yeah. So, we've got a free Cut on Tail run in. This is uh, thanks to Kefra, passive, pa party passive. Um, yep, so can we just put him down? Yeah, and we've uh, got and I think we go with well. uh, this, this. Then make some. Oh, we put the Battle Hopper there. So yeah, that's the that's a passive here, 25% chance. And now, and now we're going on Psyche Lily Pad. Yeah, we're going to create even more. Yeah. Three more. Hope our next door isn't the Buck Tooth Commander. Uh, we've got enough to play the the sharp shooter. Yeah, so I think we just do that. <laughs> oh, we've got. And <laughs> we made more to list. <laughs> this is what I was saying about sharp shooter having some pretty good hits. One of the oh. hits you. Is extra richest. Unfortunately, the recruiter is just going to block out the richest here, but still. This next turn is going to be awesome. Oh, and the and the enemy is stuck on resources. I mean, I think we just play all three richest out, right? Yeah, we go with the rituals. There's no way, and that, we may be getting awesome. some battle uppers. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this board! It's only for it's only turn three as well. Do we just go glyph and start swinging in here? I think so. We I mean, we've got enough, right? Yeah. At this point, I mean, we we could go with the silly, you know, play, but for the most part. Oh no, you can prize for a witch list. Oh, no, that's one less witch list to make battle hoppers. And win. this one is twelve twelve now because we've got so many things attacking that costs one. It's down to four. That works. And, and it still has no resource. Yeah, I'm just... Let's not screw <laughs> around too we much. We the other Ronin with the, with the Kaffir as well. Yeah, another one. Oh, that was a nice game. Oh no, prize fall. Like, prize fall again. 
Clean Down Snakes 21. Again, this deck isn't the fastest deck. Turn 4, turn 5 wins are generally the value look into. I think I've had a few turn 3 wins of the deck, but it's very uncommon. And now you're going be, yeah. to the third encounter just to show that you can in, in different order. Yep. So yeah, to me. we're doing what Shinner does best is is just going extremely wide on the board. Uh, granted, this first game is is not the average. <laughs> but... Yeah, that first game you'd be lucky to get that like in a whole day's worth of play. Oh, we've got this game. Oh, is I going mean, we've to got to fun. keep it with Divine Altar. Like, it's got Divine Altar. I don't. And we're going to draw more, one more card with Seki if if it's not bugged. So. We're going to get a card. We're going to get one for Seki, and we're going to get one for our talent as well. Oh, true, yes. So two um, cards. We can, okay, so we're only going to get one card here um, mm. because I think Seki's bug because we're going second. I think we just take Glyph here because I don't know who'll get the third resource for Bucktooth Commander. Although we have got a Divine War, a Divine Altar. Ah, we've got it. Yeah, we've got to take it with Divine Altar. Okay, so we only got one card. Bucky. But now this is the uh, the um, the level fifteen uh, cleric uh, level fifteen Shinner talent that, uh, trade that's coming in, right? Yep. We won the previous game, so we get a free random Shinner on the board. Yep. Now oh, we got wild shot again. It's not the card we put on top, or is it? Oh no, we drew the back two commander straight away. That's no, right. we we drew it straight away. Yeah. So let's just put the bone down. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention about just about the deck if because of the talent that's making you draw cards you instantly get that third card or that card that card of the three you chose yeah so i forgot to mention i forgot to mention in the talent discussion i think um, we're going blessing first here just because we can attack with this one i think we save the blessing for divine altar next turn oh you're right we've got divine altar okay so yeah play the volume down and just Start attacking. Down. yeah it's a shame that the battle hoppers made by our talents aren't going to be extended. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the one thing with this deck. Even though oh, your whole deck's extended, sometimes you're just not going to have... Sometimes most of your board is not going to be extended. And we do this, and now the fun begins. Yeah, it's just draw two cards. And oh, every time we play Blessing, the, all the Blessings go up, so higher chance of drawing one and it gets duplicated ah, that's the end of one for there look at the board no it's only turn two as well yeah turn two attack for nine no 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 problem no problem at all and now we're pretty much set i mean yeah i mean i guess we play chlorophyllia before we play the commander but the game's over once we play the commander. Yeah, we're going to get so many shinners, and these two will... Uh, we'll be close to lethal right now. Uh, let's see. I'm just... Uh, it's worth mentioning, we have 50 health right now as well. <laughs> Didn't even see that. <laughs> Alright, so double commander because of the divine authors. That means double the battle hoppers. That means double the stat bonuses there. And, is and we just it? have lethal on board. It's worth mentioning that Guru, despite being a cleric, doesn't have life drain because it wasn't in our deck at the start of the game. It wasn't in so the deck. So it wasn't affected by the talent point. Yeah. Turn three. Good stuff, good stuff. Deck's working like a charm right now. Right, next fight. Who are we fighting? It's the Rowan. Isn't that the character from the f book? Um, sorry, I couldn't pick that up. Uh, Rowan, run one. No, I guess this one is run when. I think it's run when, yeah. Okay, so we're going first. Uh, what do we? Get, I guess turn one Chlorophyllia and turn two Buck Commander is. Yeah, I tend to play Buck a bit later. Like, I personally on turn two would do Concubani and Minario. Okay, makes sense. But, but this is a keep, right? Yes, yeah, a keep easily. Two shards and the Chlorophyllia is 
generally what you want. Um, should we take the zero cost Ronin? I think we take the zero cost Ronin, right? Yeah. Kappa I was thinking really for a second so for the little pad because of the. Uh... And we made the Ronin to start the game as well. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> Unfortunately, no zero cost cards in hand, so we're not going to draw anything this time. Yeah. So this, and then we're going to play one of the concubines. Going yeah, to all I always the power. save the concubine power for if I happen to draw keeper or when I want to play the battle hoppers. Yeah. Oh, we got a blessing. Mm. There's a blessing. I mean, I if guess we... you play sharpshooter. Maybe you play blessing before sharpshooter, because you. I think getting the buff on one of the one cost is better right now. Yeah, so we can attack with it right away. Yeah. There's a shard that is not a Ronin. That's... Played Monsac and Leap Pad, get a Battle Hopper. Yeah, sure. I, guess. I suppose the Wild Shard can be put above the Ronin because you play, because you play the Wild Shard turn one. Oh, true. We played a Wild Shard, and that that would explain it. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So yeah, I, I played a Sharp Shooter this turn, just get a bigger board for the turn. Ooh. Again, Voice of Tombs. I mean, I think Blossom Funky Bunny is still better because that'll be getting plus one next turn. Yeah. So it'll be the exact same, but with an extra defense. And there's a chance that we get another battle up here, although we didn't get it, but. Yeah, we didn't get it this time. It's only 25% chance, and we have only played three troops this game because everything else has been made by another effect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Stunned. Wait, why is Bakhtiv Commander co plus cost? Oh, we're dazed because of Ronin. Like... Well, it was dazed, not stunned dazed, yeah. Right, I mean, here I here I played a Commander. We've got a big enough board already. And it's just... Go to town. Anything else we do this turn? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. I think we just set up for the full swing win next turn. Oh, what did I just make? What's his inspire power? Uh, when this deals damage to an opposing champion, draw cards. It's, it's, That's it's fine. a good I one. I won't do anything. I think I'll, I think we're better right now. There we go. We never got to see that zero cost drawing, and we just put wild shards above everything. It's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> that that's the the one thing. Like when one thing that I found when we're playing or building cleric uh, decks is that there's a lot of talents that modify the order of cards, and we we've got a talent that you know tells us which card we want to put on top. But as as we've seen like twice already, and it's, it's just three games so far, is that most of the time it can take a long time before you get the top card that you put it at the start of the game just because of the, all the manipulation that happens inherently when you play these cards yeah it's not sometimes it's not easy to understand even when you you know know the all, all the tenants by art and everything it's not uh, the best start in the world but like it's got a commander in i guess and we draw an extra card because of the blessing, so... Yeah, let's keep it. I think we don't play the blessing until we've got the commander out, just so we... Oh god. I guess Chlorophyllia. Go nuts with Chlorophyllia. Well, the other thing is, I am thinking is that since we're playing Chlorophyllia on turn 1, we could keep Sake on turn 2 and, and get Commander on turn 2. I mean, we'll have Commander turn 2 regardless, because we're just going to gain... We're oh, going to be on free resources. I guess we take Lily Pad actually, just so we have a Shin here. Oh, uh, Lily Pad makes sense. Wait. Oh. Oh. Here we, we go. started off with a militia. Unfortunately, we don't have a Shin here in play, so he's not gonna give the sniper tower plus one plus one. Okay, so that, that works. Uh, sniper tower's gonna give us a little bit extra damage. I wouldn't play the blessing here because it's not gonna buff anything up. Yeah, it's well, it's going to buff the sniper tower because yeah, we of don't the need eye tower getting bigger. <laughs> um, sniper tower's not gonna be attacking much this game. It's useful, but yeah, it's, it's definitely helpful. I suppose in a way that does does make it quite bad for us because it is gonna make the blessings a bit of a. Well, we can still use blessings to draw more cards if. I do two damage. Don't forget the two damage. 
Yeah, that's the one I forget. I always forget it as well. Um, oh. I, I think we just play the the commander here and the lily pad. Yeah. We'll, that way we'll be able to double sensei next turn as well. And since we've got a commander now, uh, we can play the blessing. Yeah, we might still hit the sniper tower, but at least now it's not a guaranteed 0%. Oh, nice. Hey, we hit it. Okay, that works. And uh, we got the sniper tower on standby. But shot right on first turn is often really bad for the sniper tower. Yeah. I think you saw something good here. Okay, so a shard. See what we draw for Sensei first. We might be able. We can play Guru this turn, but yeah, it's play the Keeper and this and the Guru. Why not? Because unfortunately, the problem with Guru is if you get a lot of shards in your hands, you're just never going to get to play him. Yeah. Do we go Glyph and Swing? Do you think? Uh, Glyph. Yeah, I like that. Well, we can swing on this guy. Might, basically. I think I love the idea of him trying to kill uh, any of the battle uppers so we can kill the trainer. Okay, and then we can kill the tra the Cerulea off. Yep. And we'll have a free swing next turn. 6 5. Wow. Oh, no, that's wow, a turn. I don't think I've ever seen him have this good of a turn. <laughs> That was a turn. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not going to play the shards at this point. Nah. Don't need to. Well, maybe a little I mean, bad. Yeah, play the sensei first, maybe. Just in case. Oh, this is great. Yeah, so we can play the pad now, make a couple bigger. Kill off one of the cloud knights with sniper. With sniper tower. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever seen it have that good of a turn before. <laughs> that was one crazy turn. I mean, if if you're not on a very good synergist deck, that turn is go likely going to kill you. Yeah. I remember one time I was on the perfect arena run record, and it might have been with this deck. I can't remember what deck it was with. Um, at least the arena equivalent of the deck. And Ember Spire Witch has the Heroic Outlaw, I think it's called in her deck. And she runs two of them. And I yeah. lost the game because she got both of them. She had both of them in her hand. And I got her down to like the exact threshold where she could play it for free. And she hit me for like 16 damage or something because of it. And I lost. And I was so <laughs> upset. I was like, I I've got this game. It'll be fine. And I just lost that. I was like, no. Uh, this works. Yeah, I think it's okay. We've got like a good curve to start off the game with. So I think it's pretty good. And keep her, keep her with a... Um, do we want Evolve there? Or keep her, do you think? Uh, we already got two keepers, so I, I, I think I'm going yeah, with Evolve. Yeah, definitely Evolve. Uh, no. Oh, well, nope. just let's just select a shard there. Yep. I made the mistake once. Uh, this one turns the threshold requirement of a card to blood. And if you target one of your cards that has a threshold requirement, it's going to be unplayable. So I mean, we can well, get a blood threshold, to be fair. We, we have a little pad, but... <laughs> yeah, I'd rather get about hop off it. I swear this encounter used to give you two castle walls. Or am I mistaken oh, there? Oh, recruiter or... first. That's what we're yeah, doing, Yeah, I right? think so, yeah. Because we're going to be playing two troops next turn, and then possibly even two troops a turn after. I guess we play the blessing because we're never going to get something less than war cost. Yeah. Again, it's a bit of a little bit of counter synergy in this particular matchup. Oh, nice. I also really like to force the trades on that fight if I can. Yeah. If you don't trade regularly, um, I guess we have a secret pad as well. Do you think? You go with double seeker and little pad or? Yeah, I'd go Lily Pad this turn, because we have the Wild Shards for the Black Tooth to turn after. Oh, and this one's a buff, so that's great. Yeah, it's a buff to the Recruiter. I still don't think we swing in with it, though. No, no, it's not worth it. Yeah, I, I don't think they would block it, but I don't really want to try it out. 
Did we get... Oh, do we want... No, not now. Yeah, let's play both. Next turn we can go with Concubony and the activation, yeah. or just Bucktooth Commander. Yeah, see you all again. Might, might be better off doing Bucktooth Commander. And then next turn having a better curve with the Concubony into Evolve. And a Bucktooth Commander creates a militia instead because of the recruiter Yeah, so now. it makes something else bigger. No Shin Hedgehog, unfortunately. Yeah, let's do... let's go with Commander. Mm, commander or I think we do do we do militia here and just swing with both because I don't think we care about the recruiter anymore yeah I guess and, you're right and then we just dig, leave the keepers behind for a turn well they all trade with anything that they have on the board so I think... yeah but the keepers can be really big next turn potentially okay yeah, let's, let's wait one turn, I guess. Because next time we'll be able to play Boston and Concubani, make us Shin Hair, so the Keepers will be at worst a 4 tech because we can evolve as well. <laughs> nice use of resources from the AI there. <laughs> Alright, so get more blessings first. Uh, let's do this. See what happens. Again, to change the blessings aren't really doing much. And I guess we can play Guru instead. Well, I can't play it right now, but... You can do, because you can go Blossoming Concubine and then Battle Hopper. So, we go with this. And do we evolve or Guru? I think we go Guru this turn. Because we're not gonna... We don't have very good swings this turn, because the War Heroes are a bit too big. Uh, let's see... I guess this one? Yeah, I can agree to that. Just have a wider range of bigger troops. Oh, we must have made a Shin Hair as we played it as well. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. Uh, which one? I, I don't, don't think we're attacking with a commander, right? Yeah, I guess commander. Does this deck run burn or something? I don't think it does. Mm, that's a good question. Then we can put Guru down. And I guess the militia and the recruiters can swing in. Hopefully the AI blocks. And if it doesn't, it loses next turn to a wide swing anyway. Yeah. Bit weird that it chose the militia to kill over the recruits there. This. Oh, this was a good one. Yeah. I mean, we, I think we have lethal anyway. <laughs> but definitely Did a good. This pickup. one can attack. Sure. That's a worthy board. For for yeah. small, sh you know, small rabbits. Small rabbits that are now the size of dragons. We finished that game on seventy health, by the way. <laughs> seventy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, this is one of the easier dungeons, so we're, we're yeah, not being pressured too much. Too but hard. even in the harder dungeons, you you can do pretty well with that list. Yeah. Because this deck this deck struggles with three dungeons kind of it struggles with ruins mostly because of the first encounter and then a little bit because of the last one because you can't kill his beast and win the same turn um i think we have to redraw this hand yeah no 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 white threshold is no go yeah i think we keep this this is okay because we do get the draw from minario sensei oh do you go oh, with i think we take the chloro oh no richest or chloro it's a zero cost richest we have to play the take the ritualist this is so hard. Like these three are very, very good options. Yeah. Yeah. And we get a concubine. That's great. And it's the last encounter of the dungeon, so it's going to have one. It's got an extra one defense too. Okay. So we can put the witches down and. The, we got and the. Ritualist, the and then a Ronin. Yeah, don't make a Shin Hell, unfortunately, but that's fine. I've never once lost this encounter just because Hellshot Catapult is way too good <laughs> to be getting for free at the start of the game. Well, if you if you don't choose a catapult, that's another story. But when you have it, it's just so gross. Yeah. And a glyph. Yeah. I think there's an argument to play Ronin, uh, to playing Ronin and playing the effect of Concubine here instead of the Sensei, just to try and get the extra procs off the Ritualist. 
instead of and playing then you go uh, well, I mean, yeah and if anything next turn we don't draw a shard we can sensei to try and find one yeah we'll get two battle hoppers off this but can you play one unfortunately do we glyph here just to get the damage through i guess we can oh okay too late. Uh, we'll pass now so maybe just a bonus swings in Oh, I didn't block the Conky Bunny, that's good. Nope. 32. <laughs> oh no! Oh, back in here? Oh, that's fine. Okay, so one unique card. Ooh. So Ooh. what do we choose? So I guess we keep Sector Buck Tooth and play the Richest and the Buck Tooth here. Or the Richest, we can do either, really. So, Ritual is first. Into this yeah. guy. Do we wipe his board here, do you think? Uh three. I don't think so. I, I like to wait until there's at least two of the tree. Yeah, I think we're winning next turn. And some, I doubt he's gonna play like three troops next turn. Sometimes it does get them out fairly quickly. Like, okay. Just to be careful. Okay, killing this guy first, for sure. Because it depends on the number of thresholds that he has, but when he starts to have a lot of thresholds, like there's some hands where he gets yeah, a ton true. of thresholds, and then you really want to keep that for the explosive hands. Uh, so I think we also have lethal here, though. If we yeah. go evolve and catapult, it's the yeah, it's pretty easily lethal. Yeah. And now we deck with everything. Nice, we even done. Let's see. I have the dungeon crowder bonus. So usually when you play, this is something I didn't mention on the other uh, episodes, but. Uh, when you see my rewards, I, I got a Kickstarter uh, backer reward that doubles the reward at the end of the dungeon. So usually you don't get twice everything uh, for, for those who are just starting. This is something I have in my icon though. And the nice thing is that we get to open two packs instead of one. So let's see if we get a recruiter or an equipment for a recruiter. Did not get one uh. here. And oh, we got something though. Medallion of the Arena. Each of you card name Moki instead of deploy someone two random orcs would cost one. That's great though. That's powerful. But no recruiter. Or right, it means uh, we'll have to farm some more. But uh, that wraps up the gameplay section of the video here. So we play really thank you so much for joining on the recording of the episode. That was really nice. I think uh, we're going to try to have more guests in the near future. How, how did you like it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fun to do. I just really enjoyed talking about the deck. Yeah, it really shows that it's it's a, a list that you really like and you played a ton of it. And that's really, you know, the key things there. And this is why I love this list when you submit it and stuff. It really shows that you spend a lot of time on it and you just really genuinely like it. So that's always a great thing. Yeah, yeah it's definitely a go-to deck when I just want to play some games for fun. Like... It's not the most efficient. It's not the most efficient deck by any means, but it's just, it's just effective and it's enjoyable. Well, and when you get those amazing games where you get like five ritualists in play, it's just <laughs> like so the good first to one was just insane. <laughs> no, uh, so satisfying. That was great. So thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. That will conclude our episode of the week. As always, if you like the content, don't forget to support by liking, commenting on the video and subscribing to the channel. A new Adventurous Luck episode will be coming out every week along with regular additional XTCG content. Coach Ripper on signing off, hoping you'll be blessed with Kismet Smile until we meet again.